What's up guys, I am excited. Today we are tackling the third part of finding better Irish whiskeys available on the shelf. Last time we talked about blended Irish whiskeys better than Jameson, then single malts, but there are two more categories to tackle including single grain and my personal favorite single pot still. Today we're talking single pot still. It's classic and bold as Irish whiskey gets. Let's find some available single pot still hitters on What's on the Shelf Wednesday. Welcome to What's on the Shelf Wednesday, I'm Jason C, and this is the series where I bring you quick reviews of whiskeys that you can actually find on the shelf, including bourbons, rye, scotches, Irish whiskeys, and more. So what's on the shelf today, part three, in our look at the four types of delicious and available Irish whiskeys, single pot still. So a little backstory, about a century or so ago, single pot still whiskey encompassed over 80% of the world's whiskey supply. But then came a series of historical events that almost wiped out the style of whiskey before its inevitable return to the world stage. No other country in the world can make single pot still whiskey. It is the original and the quintessential style of Irish whiskey making. Single or pure pot still is the only style of whiskey that is exclusively made in Ireland. Where single malt is produced from 100% malted barley, pure pot still whiskey uses a mix of malted and unmalted barley. This mixed mash bill gives the whiskey distinctive spiciness known as pot still character. All right, so let's go to our first one. This is a no brainer, Redbreast 12. So this is as classic as classic gets. Redbreast 12, the signature of the Redbreast lineup. Uh, Redbreast 12 gives you distinctive qualities of what pot still whiskey should be. Made from a mash of malted and unmalted barley, and then triple distilled in copper pot stills before it's matured in a combination of bourbon seasoned American oak barrels and Oloroso sherry seasoned Spanish oak butts and bottled at 80 proof. So where did Redbreast actually come from? Well, W&A Gilby was founded in London in 1857. By 1861, the company had opened a branch on what is now O'Connell Street in Dublin. Now at the time, it was customary for distilleries to sell distillate to wine merchants who had ample supplies of casks through the import of fortified wines. By the 1870s, Gilby's, described as wine importer and distiller at the time, had more than 300,000 gallons of whiskey from Dublin distilleries in stock under bond and sold whiskey to consumers under its own labels. By 1903, a whiskey called John Jameson & Sons J.J. Liqueur Whiskey 12-Year-Old was marketed in a bottle that's very close to the shape and markings to those for the bottlings of Redbreast. The whiskey was produced using distillate sourced from the Bow Street Distillery in Dublin, the home of Jameson Whiskey, although this whiskey was likely the prequel to Redbreast. The first official mention of Redbreast only dates back to about 1912 when Gilby's referred to the sale of Redbreast JJ Liqueur Whiskey 12-year-old. Redbreast was a nickname given to one of the whiskeys by Gilby's chairman at the time, who was supposedly an avid bird watcher. Fast forward to 1985, Gilby ceased production of Redbreast. It entered into an agreement to sell the brand to Irish distillers in 1986, and the brand was relaunched in 1991 after several years of absence from the market. Initially, this 12-year-old was the only reboot, but Redbreast also had released the 15, 21, we see the 27-year-old bottles, as well as the Lustau and small batch cast strength. Now, Redbreast 12 is probably the first single pot still Irish whiskey I was ever introduced to personally. And I think just for that, it holds a special place in my heart. This is full flavored, has a really nice balance of spicy, fruity, sherry, and some of those toasty notes. It is, is it as full flavored as the 12 year cast strength? No, but this is as classic as a single pot still gets for around 60 bucks and it's widely available. It's as much as a sure thing as it gets in whiskey, especially for these days. Um, if you haven't gotten introduced to single pot still Irish whiskey, then Redbreast 12 is where you're gonna wanna start. Next up is the spots. Now we go back to the days again when distilleries would sell their new make beer to wine merchants for maturing. Mitchell and Son developed a reputation for creating some of the finest single pot still Irish whiskey in those times. This is how they made their whiskeys back in the 1800s and how it's still made to this day at Middleton Distillery in County Cork. Now what the spot whiskeys are known for besides just being a damn good single pot still Irish whiskey is the variation and maturation that they use in each of their bottles. 
Now the original Green Spot whiskey matures in a combination of ex bourbon casks as well as ex sherry butts for between seven and 10 years. It's made in relatively small batches and bottled at 80 proof at a price around 65 bucks. Now it's unknown when exactly Green Spot was first produced, but by the 1920s, Mitchell and Son had bottled over 100 sherry casks of whiskey per year. The name of these whiskeys comes from the practice of marking the different casks with a specific color or a green spot, yellow spot, red spot, blue spot. Now, Green Spot Single Pot Still Whiskey incorporates both the malted and unmalted barley, as we've seen to produce this complex uh, and that uh, iconic spicy flavor. Tropical fruits, raisins, cantaloupe, spicy oak. There's a green apple aspect to it and a really great texture for an 80 proofer. Now, the Green Spot also comes in two finished variants, including the Green Spot Chateau Montalena, which has been finished for 12 months in French oak Zinfandel from Chateau Montalena in Napa Valley, California and Green Spot Chateau Leoville Barton, which has initially been matured in traditional sherry and bourbon casks, then finished in French oak wine casks from the renowned Chateau Leoville Barton Bordeaux in France, which is just a lot of words for to say fancy French wine cask. <laughs> this is the Chateau Leoville Barton, which is um, just probably one of my favorite Irish whiskeys. This is a little bit higher in price, looking about a hundred bucks for this one, but it's also bottled at 92 proof for a little bit more flavor. Both just take something really good and make it great with those extra flavors from those finishing casks. Of course, we can't talk about the spots without Yellow Spot. Rather than being simply a finished whiskey, Yellow Spot is special that it contains whiskey that has been chored for a full 12 year period in three oak cask types, American bourbon, Spanish sherry butts, and Spanish Malaga casks. Why I like this one so much, because it gets into this darker tone of uh, flavors. Not so much the green apple when we talk about green spot. This gets into more of a red apple, chocolate clove, allspice. You got some dark honey, some black pepper. You still maintain that spiciness. This one retails for about $110, bottled at 92 proof. A lot of folks have their favorite between green spot and yellow spot. Honestly, it's all about your palate and what you consider is the best value, but you can't lose with either one of these. Now, two more spots that are probably less available, but still worth seeking out and worth your time if you find them. The Red Spot 15 year, which is the, uh, the oldest in the lineup. And then also my World Whiskey of the Year for 2021, the Blue Spot seven year cast strength. The entire lineup is absolutely fantastic and a true, just a true representation of what single pot still Irish whiskey should be. Okay, before we get to my personal top value picks in the single pot still Irish whiskey category, let's make a cocktail with Shaker and Spoon. So Shaker and Spoon is a subscription service that teaches you to make bar quality cocktails from recipes designed by award-winning mixologists. They build these boxes around one singular spirit and try to give you different styles of cocktail making. They give you recipe cards like this, but you could also watch some how-to videos to guide you through mixing and garnishing the cocktails they give you step-by-step step, and the glossary uh, explains any unfamiliar bartending terms you may not know. Each box includes all the ingredients you need other than the alcohol for about 12 cocktails. You get about four cocktails per recipe and everything you need. Uh, syrups, bitters, garnishes, infusions, sodas, whatever it may be to make that cocktail. So today's cocktail I'm gonna make is called the Brush of the Bush and it comes in the fall from Mezcal kit. First, I need my two ounces of Mezcal. Next, a quarter ounce of sage agave syrup. Damn, you can really smell the, uh, the sage in that. Ooh, very nice. Four dashes of cherry vanilla bitters. It says dashes, not drops, so. Okay, then mix it up here. And then for the finishing touch, one to two spritzes of white sage hydrosol. All right, let's try this one. Oh, I could really taste the cherry vanilla and a little bit of the smoke from the mezcal. These cocktails have been so much fun to uh, to make and to uh, to try out. Definitely need to uh, to order some more boxes. All right, so let's recap quickly. Shaker and Spoon is a monthly cocktail subscription that will deliver these craft cocktails to you. Again, each box has three recipes created by world-class bartenders, as well as enough ingredients to make for 12 cocktails, four from each recipe. The subscription start at $50 a month, but click the link below in the description or use code MASH and DRUM at checkout to get $20 off your first box. Again, click the link below or use code MASH and DRUM at checkout to get $20 off your first box. 
Now go get some fun cocktails delivered straight to your door with shaker and spoon. I'm gonna have more of this. Okay, so back when we talked about blended Irish whiskey is better than Jameson, we talked about Powers Gold and how Powers dominated the worldwide whiskey trade in the 19th century. Now part of Irish distillers and still overshadowed by Jameson a little bit, Powers makes two of the best value and best tasting single pot still Irish whiskeys available today. First is the Powers 3 Swallow. Powers 3 Swallow is the 21st century embodiment of the traditional pure pot still whiskey style which made Powers so famous. It's spicy, but yet it's delicate at the same time. It's matured primarily in American bourbon barrels and then married with a small sherry aged component, which gives it some characteristics that are close to the Redbreast 12, but this one is only 40 bucks. Plus it's non-chill filtered and it's bottled a little bit higher at 86.4% ABV rather than the 40% that we see from Redbreast 12. But when you talk about the best value single pot still Irish whiskey on the shelf, to me, it still powers, but it's this one right here. It is the John's Lane. Now this is a 12 year old, 12 year old. Now the, when you look at the label, the 12 is so friggin' small. I wish they'd make that bigger because I doubt people see it. Uh, they probably walk right by it and not realize that this is a 12 year old Irish whiskey. Powers John's Lane 12 year old is a triple distilled Irish whiskey that celebrates the original John's Lane distillery in Dublin, Ireland. So Powers John's Lane is matured in a combination of bourbon and Oloroso sherry casks for no less than 12 years. This one is bottled at 92 proof without chill filtering and has a retail price of around 65 bucks. So same price as Redbreast 12, but you're getting non-chill filtration, a higher proof at 92, and it's an absolute beast of an Irish whiskey. This probably is my favorite, especially for the money. As this opens up, I feel like you get a little bit of like coconut and like chocolate covered coconut, almost like a, uh, like a Mounds bar a little bit. And then right at the very end, you get that really nice amped up spice. It's also oilier and has more texture to, to it than, than what I feel like I get in the Redbreast 12 for the same price. As good as the red breast can be, and the spots for that matter, when you're looking for flavor, uh, the full experience on your palate, value and availability, the John's Lane from Powers, to me, is numero uno. All right guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of What's on the Shelf Wednesday. We took a look at the single pot still available Irish whiskey category. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. Uh, if you haven't yet, find me on Instagram, find me on Twitter. Let me know what you think of these. Uh, what other single pot still Irish whiskeys uh, are out there. I know Glendalock is another one that makes a really good single pot still. They're kind of the, uh, the first craft distillery in Ireland. I think that's, that's what they're dubbed. But Glendalock I know makes some great uh, Irish pot still. Um, single Irish pot still, I should say, and there's probably a wealth of other new ones that have come out to the market that I haven't tasted yet. So if you have any other suggestions, please leave them down in the comments. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey, it's the people you share it with. So cheers, and I'll see you next time right here on The Mash and Drum. Take care, everybody.